Okay, welcome. I'm just starting this live, but it's probably going to end up on Patreon and things like that. I'm not expecting people to come in. I just need to record this. Um, and I'm sure I'll post it in places where it can become accessible on some level. So I wanted to talk about alchemy and alchemy of all the elements and self-healing. And the main focus is on prayer and meditation together with movement and breath. So the alchemy is happening because, the, and, and in terms of what elements they are, the body is earth, right? So that grounded energy being in the body. And then we have air, which is an element that I really am focusing on for Libra season, Mercury retrograde, because Mercury has to do with um, basically communication, technology, things like that. And Libra is an air element, so it has to do with our thoughts, prayer, meditation. Of course, there's an aesthetic aspect and a grounded aspect to Libra because Libra is ruled by Venus. But this particular video is going to be about connecting our breath with movement and uh, creating alchemy for self-healing and our, how our thoughts can help direct that in connection with our guides. So number one is that we're not doing this alone, right? This is, this is a spiritual practice. I know that in some places in the Western world, when we teach about yoga, when we teach about spiritual practices, sometimes it has to be divorced from the spiritual origin for it to be digestible in the West. That's not what this is. If you don't believe in God and you don't believe in spirit, then that's fine. Maybe you have alternatives to that, which is uh, the elements, maybe the universe, maybe it's just the energy that is around us. It doesn't have to be a deity attached to a religion, but there needs to be a sense of a higher power to do this practice, okay? You can do it without that intention, but that's not the way that I'm teaching it. I don't believe that I need to divorce the spiritual origins of these practices because i think that to do so would be divorcing it from the origins the ascended masters the people basically it would be like colonizing this practice if if i do that because that's not what this is about i'm sure there's a lot of practices all over the world where people can tap into things that have nothing to do with spirit this is not what that is so why i'm saying this is because it's really important for you to have an ancestor altar up um or a deity altar but definitely your ancestor altar ancestor altars are very very important um because there we have a lot of alchemy happening when we sit in prayer for our ancestors we're connecting to them and we're connecting to their power so if you have work that you need to do with your ancestors, that needs to happen first. A simple white cloth and maybe a candle that you won't have lit all the time, some incense, a glass of water. And as long as you build that connection with your ancestors, you will have them guiding you. And then they'll actually help you to understand your relationship with higher deities. Okay, so you don't just rush straight to the deity. You kind of have that relationship that you build and cultivate with your ancestors. That helps us to acknowledge the pain and intergenerational trauma that we're carrying and then it also allows us a space to get the wisdom that we're carrying too it's not just pain and and trauma it's also wisdom we are we have a lot of wisdom in these bodies okay so that's number one um so we gain the foundation of our spiritual practice with our ancestors and then we lead into the next part of the practice so the part of the practice that i want to talk about and how it involves having these altars up is that you're sitting in front of your altar. You don't have to be, you know, you could be just in a moment of a trigger and you may need this practice. So it doesn't have to be something that you do just right there, um, you know, in front of your altar only. You can do it other places, but just having that space in your home that you dedicate to your ancestors is important. So what this is about is self-healing, right? We want to have autonomy and get in touch with what's going on with us and not always processing everything mentally or not having the answers or things like that. If you feel that you've been like really extremely depressed or anxious or having physical pains, um, things that are coming and going in your body, like awarenesses, just like leth lethargy, all those things, um, I deal with that those things all the time. I have chronic illnesses and 
I'm mentally ill and I'm like going through all those things, but there are moments of relief because sometimes something's surfacing in my body and it needs to be let go and I just need to pay attention when my body's saying like, hey, I'm hurt, I tune in. So the practice is that you sit or you can lay down, whatever feels right, but you are gonna be in some movement um, and you begin to breathe. You just breathe into your chakras. You could start from the top of your head and work your way down your chakras to the root. And as you do that, in each chakra, you say a prayer. Okay, so let's say we're in the head, we're in the crown. Then we say the prayer of please. I pray to my guides, my angels, my elevated ancestors to help clear my mind of any negative thinking today. May I not, may I not think anything negative um, or hurtful or harmful towards anyone today, right? And that's also a form of fasting for those of us like myself who like suffer with eating disorders. A lot of times fasting for, you know, Navratri or Ramadan or things like that can be triggering so what we could do is fast from certain thoughts fast from certain actions things that are more accessible because spirit hears our sacrifices and and understands that we're trying to do something that is more in alignment with our personal needs but still sacrificing something to be close to spirit because sacrificing those negative thoughts is a way to also be close to spirit that's what fasting is about is actually removing some elements so that our attention is more towards God, God is source, the great spirit. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're using prayer, number one, then we're using meditation, right? Because a lot of times these practices start in meditation. So you're in a moment of silence and breath, okay? And then you start to uh, use the focus towards the spaces with prayer and breath as well so you're bringing your breath into your crown you're bringing your breath into your third eye or your throat or wherever you are in your body let's say it's not a chakra let's say you have shoulder pain you're bringing your breath into your shoulder and you're breathing in there and while you're in there things may arise let's say it's a memory of a trauma let's say it's some kind of issue with um you know a person in your life right now then you're breathing into that Space. when that thing comes up when that energy comes up and this is why this is important not to divorce these yogic practices from their spiritual origin because that's where we need our guides that's where we need our ancestors and our guides our our you know energy healers that are ascended right we ask them to take that thing and move it so pay attention to what came up don't go in and try to fix it with your mind you might be called to work it out in your head ruminate on that argument you know and you might be really involved in the physical pain of it. This is a harder part. It's hard to have physical pain and say, oh, I'm not going to think about it. You have to go deep into the pain. So you have to focus yourself and focus your breath into the pain while it's happening. But once you do it, you'll notice how you can do it, right? So once you actually access the center of your pain, you'll notice that you can go back there a lot more. You're, le you're learning how to do this. So if it's your first time accessing the center of pain in your body, you might be like, what the hell is this? It might seem like it's just doesn't make any sense. Like that's not how this works. But once you try it and it works for you, you'll keep using that technique. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Then this video, this information is not for you or it's not for you right now okay so we access the pain we see the vision we breathe into it and we ask for it to be removed and we have to know what we're asking for sometimes sometimes it's like trial and error okay let's say we're seeing an argument let's use that we're seeing an argument with somebody while we're focusing on the pain in the shoulder right we're seeing the person we're hearing what's coming up and we think it's about blocking that person. Like, oh, we feel triggered, we feel stressed. Stay in your feelings, stay in what is the, what's really happening. And if you can't access the truth of the situation, right? Then maybe you can just ask your guides and say, I can't see what's happening. I don't know what's really honestly happening here. Can you help? help me to see can you help me to have an understanding of why this pain is here and why it's attached to this argument or situation okay and your guides may give you a vision and while you're doing this you're not stopping your breath now your guides may lead you and your body may also lead you into movement you might start moving your shoulder you might start swaying you might start wanting to moan or or cry or rock or swinging your arm over your head you don't you honestly you're gonna be led into things and on it you have to really fight the 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 notions of this is weird or i'm ashamed and this is why it also heals 
our self-esteem and our connection to our bodies, right? Like, we're not going to be ashamed if my, I'm not going to be ashamed if my body wants to do something that isn't pretty or designated for this moment, right? Like we're sitting in meditation now, I'm like, you know, running around my house, like swinging my arms, like do whatever you feel you're called to do, okay? And when you start this practice you'll notice that the motions or things that you're guided to do are not that intense this is also why we're tying it back to this being a spiritual practice once you solidify your relationship with your guides they're not going to guide you to do something that's harmful to you so you have to build that trust build that practice build that space to do these practices and get the full potential out of them okay if you've already been in like yogic spaces and you've also in um been involved in like leading a life through yogic philosophy or things like that then you may have already touched upon these things you've heard of somatic healing and breath work pranayama all those things so you may already be in connection with that okay so again i'm just gonna really just simplify it down and set that practice out you're in front of your altar or you have your altar you're already set up this is for practices for people connected to their spirit guides connected to their ancestors okay and you breathe into your body where there is pain or maybe it's just your daily practice to check in you can start with the chakras if you don't know where to go and then you can work your way into the part different parts of your body you know and then what you're doing is you're using the alchemy of fire in your movement you're using the alchemy of air in your thoughts, in your prayers, and in your breath. You're using the alchemy of water when you're in, in touch with the emotions trapped in that space. And you're using the and you're you're adding that that earth element into this alchemy when you're doing it with your body, your body. Okay. So you're you're grounded in yourself, you're grounded in your physical body. Okay, I hope that this practice is helpful for you. I hope that it brings you some relief from any emotional, mental, or physical anguish that you're in. And if anything, it just gives you a practice to add to your daily, weekly, or monthly routine. Thank you for tuning in, and I'm just really grateful to be able to share these things with you. They're things that work for me, and I hope that they're able to work for you and serve you as well. Love you.